Hello and welcome to Hardcast, where we finally get to read a comic that headlines Chris's favorite character. I'm Humphrey Erm, and with me as always is Christian Kloss. Hello. Lifeline. Give me Eternal Warrior Volume 1, Sword of the Wild. All right, take two. <laughs> yeah. So, well, you know, some little uh, accident with the management of the what's called comics files had uh, Chris read the wrong uh, what's called comic. He read volume yes, two I... of Eternal Warrior yeah. instead of volume one. Yep. Bad Chris. Well, you know, I personally I think I prefer volume two over one, so. Yeah, me too. It's all right. So, but let's, uh, you know, it's, let's start how I was planning to start, you know, a while ago. But, um, so Chris, what do you think about the first Eternal Warrior comic? Um, it was very underwhelming. Right? <laughs> yeah. So I assume you didn't like it either? No, and I was trying to remember, because I remember when I first read it. Because, again, I can't remember the exact order I read the, these comics when I downloaded them. This from the Humble Bundle. Yeah. You know, I had no idea what Valiant was. You know, it's just, ooh, Humble Bundle, ooh, cheap, ooh, comics. Yeah, yeah. So I can't remember what I started with, uh, you know, like, okay. Uh, so I remember, like, getting, like, okay, Eternal Warrior. And I don't think I had read the uh, uh, volume two of Archer and Armstrong, you know, which would be the first depiction of him. Yeah. And I don't think I read the Unity volume one where you got to see him as well. So, you know, to me, then it's like, okay, it's a new character, totally new, this first depiction of him for me. And there were a lot of things that just weren't super clear at times, and just, and it kind of, like you said, underwhelming. Like, I wasn't really, like, would you have been super excited about him if this was your first appearance of him? Not really. I mean, it just seems very generic. And I don't know, I just, it just... I felt I felt so confused at so many points and there was so much going on and it was just constantly like back and forth and and I don't know I just it was it was really confusing um I didn't know like I didn't I don't know what a geomancer is mm. you know all, all I all I hear here is I think they used the word once like in the last uh chapter yeah they were saying wizard and, a lot yeah they they said wizard instead and like talking to the gods, and I didn't realize that there were multiple gods that they all were together. It, it and, didn't. See, there's like nothing from yeah. what we've read before to really imply that in in that way. Exactly, and, and I mean, it also feels like these are the these kind of gods are like, um, you know, like because because you have kind of proof. I mean, you have people who have actually seen these gods, so I would think that it'd be more like a bigger thing. Like, like I would, I would, I would actually assume that uh, this universe would not have you know christianity and and all these other religions because you know and instead have these religions because i mean the way that this seems these seem like the the ancient religions that people would actually then follow like in in real life as well like you know these would be like so we'd have the the house of the earth the house of the circle and that kind of stuff or the wheel what was it yeah mm. So I don't know. It was it was just very confusing and and uh, again, very underwhelmed with the whole thing. I mean, a lot of the stuff was really interesting. Um, like I I like the uh, I like that flashback where the Civil Gilad War? was teaching what? Oh, 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 which which one? Where Gilad was teaching his children to hunt. Oh, that one. Okay. Yeah, it, it did. It did. Um, exp it, it was an interesting way of the way that he looks at it. You know. It's not just you know killing and killing. It's you know killing for a reason and stuff like that, and and all these um, yeah, all this kind of stuff like why his son was then better, and then also kind of getting a little bit more about his daughter's um, reasons for maybe disliking her father a little bit or being jealous of her brother, you know, stuff like that. And it's interesting, but again, just the whole thing like wait, now he's the sword of the dead, and and now there's like. I don't know. It, I don't know. It was really confusing. And you know what's worse? What? From what I can tell from having read most of the comics up till 20... Yeah, the beginning of 2016. Yeah. So I can't recall any of these things being brought up again. Ah, oh, Jesus. You know, I mean, this is like a big thing. He has a daughter. He has a son. 
yeah. and his son is again this uh, sword of the day you know like the interesting setups and yeah i honestly and i i know this is a spoiler for you in that sense but because it doesn't come up <laughs> it's more of a like well, i mean uh, it's more of a, a warning spoiler. you yeah it's more of a yeah. Negative, yeah, it's more of a warning you in terms of now if, if yeah, i'm wrong it, you know correct me in the comments or however it works here but yeah. from what i can yeah. read right you right you should, you should, they should write you on twitter so yeah, yeah right right the uh, write to me uh, on twitter because but i'm just really not again maybe something recently came out and i'm talking on yeah. my ass but it's, it's, well it's just interesting because there's just i mean because i'm thinking like well what 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 happens then with the eternal warrior i mean has he had more volumes than just the, the second one that i've already read not not in that title because that's the whole thing it's um it's like because well, that's the weird thing because because now that i'm listening i mean I mean, okay, so yeah, I read the first, I read the second volume first, and I didn't really understand what was going on. I just thought, okay, well, this is the setting that we're in now. Okay, he's a he's being called the God Killer. Okay, that means he's killed gods or whatever. So, but then I'm looking at it, and it's um, two thousand years in the future. Yeah, four thousand one AD. Yeah, so that's basically exactly what they said at the end of the that this volume. You know, we've only got two thousand years to prepare. So I was now assuming when I read that line, I was like, okay, well, so then volume two is the preparation for the return of Nurgle. And now volume three is going to be the return of Nurgle. So, well, there is no volume three. <laughs> okay. So that, that, yeah. Okay. So that's my question then. So yeah. basically there is no volume three. So they basically just dropped all of it. Well, the whole Nurgle thing is because, uh, uh, I don't know, I thought, I, when I was first rereading it, I thought, okay, yeah, it's, you know, a false god of sorts or something, you know. There, like a lot well, of I things the in god history. Of, the god of death is what I thought. Yeah, no, but I was thinking like with um, what's called because they were giving like those warriors, um, those enemy warriors, uh, these drugs to kind of like make them crazy. So I thought like, okay, yeah, that's you know, that's just their explanation to how why it's happening like this. You know, and then it's not like a true god or something like that. It's just yeah, it's just about humans how they will worship something or whatever. But then, oh no, wait, so there's one. And then I'm like, how does that get into play with the Shadow Man at the dead side? Because, you know, that's right. that's like a go, you know, that's like a dead thing here. And again, this came later, so it's not like, you know, they didn't know about it. Again, not well, that again, there need... could be some, some connections. I mean, we don't know, we don't know who Nurgle is because, again, there was no volume three. And who knows, maybe Nurgle is someone that Shadow Man does know. Like, there is, he is a um one of these gods in the dark side or the the underside or whatever it's called a uh, dead side the shadow world huh what is it dead side it's called the dead side the dead side right yeah so um it could be i mean the dead side is huge I and mean, we haven't explored all of it and again that might have been an interesting crossover you know, have shadow man and um and gilad get together and fight you know the Nurgle. Yeah, again, you know, from what I've seen, I haven't seen it. But then, what about this, um, this, this geomancer that we have? Then, so yeah, that was something that I wasn't uh, quite understanding either. Because um... yeah. also, why is he blind in the past, but then can see in the future? So was he? Oh, I didn't realize that he was blind. Was he? Well, I think that's what they were... Weren't they talking about how you can't see, you can't do all that kind of stuff? I thought it was more, like, uh, metaphorical. You mean, like, in the Civil War? Yeah, well, because, I mean, if I was looking... Like, his eyes looked always so red and, and like... Um, kind of a little bit... Yeah. Or maybe that was just some sort of blood thing. I don't know. Because in the, in the first scene where we meet him, in the second page... Yeah, here you know, we go. So like, you don't seem to see much at all. Yeah, exactly. Because and then when you get like a close up, we're well, not a close up of his eyes, but you see his eyes, and they're all like red and and you know glassy. So I thought that maybe that meant that he was blind, or he was blind, because you know often blind people get you know different colored eyes, or the the like they get go glassy or uh, like white. So I thought that no. maybe that just indicated that he was blind. No, I think the idea there with him, like you know, with Gilad killing that snake, I think it's the idea of. Uh him being sort of um, short-sighted, like he can see like the big picture and then wasn't aware of like, you know, the immediate danger of the snake. Yeah, okay. So yeah, metaphorical. All right. So. Yeah, but um, 
But one thing that brought that I was thinking about this though, um, and this is also where I'm feeling this comic is a bit confusing in terms of, like I'm surprised I usually don't get like this with continuity. You know, like with other like comics, because I'm kind of like, yeah, if it's a good story and stuff, you know, whatever. But what's called this event happened in the American Civil War. So what is that, 1860s? Yeah, I guess. So, so okay, so that's the, and he's the current geomancer, that guy, Buck. So then uh, about uh, what's called uh, 150 years later or something like that. Because, you know, it says present, yeah. the day in Africa and all that. So we'd assume it'd be 2013 or something when this was done. Yeah, that, that was going to that was gonna be my question too. Like, how is he still the geomancer? Exactly. Because I was, I'm, again, you know, I'm sure, you know, the magic of the earth can keep him kind of like alive longer. But I was never under the impression that they were immortal unless killed. Because that's the whole idea that they there's several geomancers. You know, it's a reincarnation kind of thing. Exactly. That's what I thought too. And... I mean, I was also just kind of wondering, because then, then that means that this character has to be killed at some point for a new Ge Geomancer to come in the Harbinger War. Or no, not Harbinger. What is it called? The Valiant. Mm. Valiant? Well, yeah. remember, the Geomancer, the current Geomancer was supposed to be the guy in the Archer Armstrong Volume 1. You know, they were keeping him hidden from, from Gilad by keeping him in a plane all the time. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, they accidentally, you know, Armstrong accidentally kills him, you know, because that boon or whatever fell on him. Right. And then, uh, I, yeah, her name was Kay, I believe, becomes the Geomancer in Volume 2. Right, right, right. So we do we do realize, we, we do know who a Geomancer is by this time. Oh, yeah. If yeah, we've yeah. read every single comic. Yeah, exactly. So Geomancers were, yeah, so, yeah. you know, right, right. established. But I was thinking when rereading this then... What's called? When did this take place? Because they said the present. So, how does that work then? If um, Buck was alive as the Geomancer, wait, was the other guy already the Geomancer, or was he going to be the next Geomancer? So, no, Buck was the current Geomancer. No, no, I'm not talking about Buck. I'm talking about the guy in the plane. No, I think that was the, that was the current one, and then when he died, K would get the role. Yeah. So you see, this is like the only time, they, they, it, this was the only time I've actually been like this about like continuity, because oftentimes it makes sense for the most part, you know, minor things you might be kind of like, yeah, well, whatever, you know, they misremembered or. Yeah, but obviously, I mean, like present can be very relative. I mean, obviously they're not going to add like actual dates. So, um, you know, all of this could have happened because because basically what you're trying to say when in a in a in a fiction when you write present time you mean around about the time that we're living in right now oh yeah no i'm not you know i'm not picky in that yeah, sense so, so, is it 2012 yeah, so they're not, they're not basically yeah but they're not basically saying that this is this is happening in 2000 whenever it came out 2013 um, it could it could be saying that it happened somewhere between 2009 and 2013 so, mm. so, yeah, no, that's... So, I mean, who knows? I mean, you don't... I mean, is, is, there must be um, some sort of graphic online with all the geomancers and how long they've been alive and when they died and all that kind of stuff. You, right? you overestimate the amount of Valiant fans. I underestimate or overestimate? You overestimate. Okay. Now, I'm, maybe there is. I know there are a lot of lists of, like, reading order and stuff, which in terms of getting a chronological read... So, you know, maybe there is something, but what, I'm just curious in terms of if you take, for example, Archer and Armstrong Volume 2, you know, first appearance of Gilad, you know, and he seems to be doing his job there. So is that taking place after Sword of the Wild? Exactly. I mean, yeah. You know, th th that's where I got very confused. Uh, this story really, I mean, if I read the story first... You know, then like, okay, I'll use that as the, like, my establishment of characters. Yeah. But having it not be that way, it just feels like it's conflicting with a lot of points. And right. again, so, his... do we do we know what happens to Buck? So, no. <laughs> okay. Or maybe he wasn't so mentioned basically... in Volume 2. I don't know, but... Yeah, I know. I mean, it wasn't mentioned in Volume 2 at, two at all. But that's what I mean. It's just that maybe it's... um. Well, because in Volume 2, you know, Gilad has already killed everyone. Yeah, no. 
or all the or all the gods you know i guess so i'm assuming that he's killed everyone but but that also makes it really weird to think about like well you know because because at the end of volume one i'm assuming okay his goal now is to kill all the gods yeah you know, to, to to yeah so in volume two he's being called the god killer and that means that I mean, for me, that means that he never returned back to his job. Mm. And he, he, he killed the Earth Goddess in this volume. Yeah. So why would he return? Why would the Geomancer even exist anymore afterwards? Exactly, because that's the thing. Because remember, you know, in volume two of Archer and Armstrong, we got to see yeah, that there was he's... that depiction of the, like, the Earth. You know, people saw it yeah. differently. She saw, like, the monkey goddess or whatever, like this monkey woman. And those kinds of things, as well as then that big image of the Gilad seeing this giant woman in space. Yeah. It, but the way it was done, I because I like that idea how they treated the Earth, that it wasn't, like, an immediate, you know, entity. It was just the Earth somehow through, like, as a, you know, kind of like the Force. It was just kind of there as, like, a giant, you know, just life force getting Gila to do things and the Geomancer to do things for it. But having an actual sort of flesh and blood, even if it's not flesh and blood form, I don't know, it's just odd. And then like, oh, and then they did kill it with explosions. Yeah. I well, don't... Here's, here, I have two theories about how this whole thing worked. Either, um, either, you know, this is a parallel universe which is, you know, an easy way to to explain almost any kind of mm. continuity problems. Elseworld. Or, or something happens that we haven't seen um, in The Eternal Warrior where he he tries to kill the goddess, or the, the goddess of Earth, or he, he did, or he thinks he did, but then he realizes that she's not just this flesh and blood entity, and then she basically resurrects herself or she gets back into power or she just now exists as this entity. And then uh, Gilad basically accepts his fate and goes back to becoming her servant. And then goes and finds the next Geomancer and all that kind of stuff. So that, 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 that's the way I would think that either the story would end. But then again, you know, there's a whole thing with the, um, with the, with, with the thing about like 2000 years from now and maybe he's being called the god killer because he still killed all the other gods but uh, yeah. I, don't know. I mean it's just it's just one of those things where yeah it probably is just a an oversight i mean maybe they had everything plotted out um before anything started and they didn't see what was going to stick or maybe they didn't care or maybe they were just like yep yeah, we're just going to make these all standalone stories or whatever i don't know yeah no exactly but, this was the first time and rereading it now it was the first time I was genuinely frustrated reading a Valiant comic. Yeah. So, yeah, and again, you know, I'm not trying, you know, I'm, I'm very surprised I, uh, you know, I, I know I am otherwise, you know, especially between the two of us. I'm the comic book guy, you know, person. Yeah. But in issue number 22, it's, you know, that kind of thing. But I genuinely felt like that reading it. You know, and not in terms of the whole, oh, I feel so betrayed or, you know, Valiant, pay me reparations for this. Wow. Yeah, no, no, that I'm not feeling like that. You know. I know, I know, but like, just, just the fact that you felt frustrated about a, a comic, just kind of, I don't know. <laughs> well, like again, I get that. You know, if that's the worst, thing, if that's the worst thing that you know that to frustrate me, you know, I'm well off. You're, you're, you're such a nerd. Mm. Such a nerd. I am the bigger nerd of the house of the two of us. So the alpha that's nerd. The understate that's, that's the understatement of the year. <laughs> I'm the alpha nerd. Yeah. So, but isn't that like? Yeah. <laughs> no, but that's kind of. I was, thing. Th I was thinking, isn't 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 that an oxymoron? Oh. Actually, that could be a good line for something. Uh, you know, having maybe some yeah, yeah, some kind of like Jacques trying to go undercover as a nerd, then he like miss misspeaks and saying like, you know, I'm the alpha nerd, and be like. Um, no, you know, none of us are alphas. We're all beta nerds. <laughs> You'd be asking for the beta nerd. <laughs> I don't know. Right. Just, yes, stupid line. No. Yeah, okay. But yeah, but it seems like we're. Um, I'd like to bring up some positivity, though, to the podcast. Um, 
you know, if, uh, if possible. Okay. So I really love the Civil War flashbacks. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't feel like there were enough of it to really appreciate it. Mm. You know, oh, it, it was just, in, in, in that sense, it was just flashbacks. I mean, if they had made an entire volume in the Civil War era, then maybe that would be something to talk about. But right now, it's just... I don't know. It, it didn't. It didn't feel important enough on my side. I mean, yes, I, I understood that whole connection between the the rise of that group of the wild. Yeah, I understood that connection there, but otherwise, it was just one of those typical things. Like, um, you know, it's like um, Gilad basically saying, "No, fuck you, Earth," and then the Earth saying, "Fuck you back." Fuck you. Fuck and you. Fuck you. Yeah, exactly. It's just like, yeah, well, she does it on a billion years, so a couple of minutes aren't going to change. Oh, yeah, well, now you have to kill that family. You know, that kind of thing. It's mm. just like, uh, yeah, okay, fine, whatever. Um, but, I mean, at least it did some important stuff saying that, like, um, or kind of giving him the, the decision to, to not do any, not, do, not like, continue as, a, as the servant for the uh, geomancer anymore. Which I like, but um, still, I don't know. It wasn't. It wasn't enough of. It didn't. It wasn't enough um, in that timeline, where you know I could really talk about it much now. Mm, no, I what's called that I can agree with. But I guess for me, it was just the visuals of it. First of all, I love Clayton Crane's artwork. You know, since they kind of switch artists around depending on the flashback. Yeah. But uh, that one page when he <laughs> what's called slices off that guy's head. Uh, like the, the dynamics of that page and just the sort of like not, not necessarily context but just the idea of okay this this is the eternal warrior for me you know being an absolute badass in you know in a certain specific you know time frame yeah like you know because you know you, he has the scars and stuff so you always recognize him i mean you know this regardless of artist right and the idea then, that to me is the whole thing, you know, it's one thing we liked about the, the Valiant, how he changes clothes and uniforms and stuff, but it's always the same guy. So that page there for me is like awesome. And that to, it was enough for me to want to point it out as a positivity. Yeah, well, I mean, it is a good, it is a good shot or it's a good panel, but yeah, I mean. But I agree, it's not enough of it. It's not like it's like a constant framing device or something. Yeah. So, but the, the, we're speaking of that scene then for another thing, it's, what's called, um, well, how do, how, how do you feel the whole, it's just, a, sorry, it's just a, such a weird thing because it's, you know, it's all fiction and stuff, but it's in a historical setting, but they're kind of giving this justification for the, the extinction of this whole tribe or whatever you call it, this whole... Uh, yeah, well, we've talked about this before already. The the whole like my point of view of having of, of historical fiction. Right, we did that. Uh, yeah, during Harbinger with the whole idea of um, the yeah, series. Was it Harbinger? Well, yeah, with the series. Well, we discussed. Well, I asked you there about how they tried to give an explanation for the Syrian. Um, was it all? Yeah, right. the whole uh, crisis there, and that was oh, it's Harada sitting in psyops and doing things. Right, right. Um, no, but I just think it's. I mean. I think it's fine. I mean, I don't, um, I mean, they didn't specify what tribe it was or anything like that. So they, they weren't basically calling a certain tribe evil, um, or, you know, part of this wild or God of the wild organization or whatever, or however you would call it religion. Um, so I didn't see any problem with that. It was just a tool for the story and yeah, I don't. I don't really have any opinions on it because it's just like, yeah, that's that's. I mean, I, I talked all about it in that last episode about how it's just historical fiction is just that it's fiction. Um, so you shouldn't like take it too seriously. Um, and you know, if, obviously, with a comic like this where you have an in immortal person running around killing people, it's very easy to realize that it's not fic and it's not uh, fact. Um, so. Yeah, so so no one no one's going to be reading this going like, oh my god, that's why the Indians are, uh, got killed. That's good. Good that the Indians got killed. The the white people were doing God's will or something like that. <laughs> no one's going to think that. I mean, I'm sure there's some person that thinks that, but yeah. No normal person's going to think that. And 
same with all other historical fiction as well. I think people are smart enough to realize what's fiction and what's fact in literal uh, in literacy. So literature, in literature, yeah, in literature, yeah. Sorry, I'm still a little bit sick. Uh. <laughs> All right, yeah, no, that's that's a fair point. I just, yes, to me, it was the whole idea of, um, like I said, you know, I agree with you, but I still have like this like nagging uh, like feeling in my neck or whatever you'd call in the back of my head. It's kind of like, yeah, this is kind of a weird thing. <laughs> well, as the person who has the closest ties to Native Americans <laughs> of the two of us, I'll tell you, it's okay. Is this offensive, Chris? Yeah, because I am the uh, the person to ask about if something's offensive for Native Americans being one eighth Mohawk. So cue the clip from South Park. Hey, he said he was one sixteenth Cherokee, <laughs> or something like that. I can't yeah. remember. Was it one sixteenth? When the white man <laughs> took our land. Ah, uh, sorry, sorry. Yes, I just love that character. <laughs> okay, that's racist. <laughs> But okay, um, well, then back to the actual, like, main plot then and such. Uh, thoughts on Gilad's daughter? Uh, I don't like her. I thought she was kind Next. of... <laughs> <laughs> I thought she was kind of interesting. It's, um... Well, I mean, she's kind of like... It's one of those typical things. I mean, I, I did feel a lot of this stuff being very... It's, it's, we've seen this stuff before. You know, the whole brother-sister or brother-brother or sister-sister thing. Yeah, Cain and Abel. Yeah, the the whole thing. We have that. I mean, the only thing that I can think of right now is from Legend of Korra in the first uh, season. Mm. Um, But, you know, it's just kind of like one of those things where... uh, Yeah, you've seen it before. and, and, And obviously the brother, you didn't see much of him until like the end in that flashback where they were hunting together. You didn't get much of his character. Because in the first chapter, you would just constantly see him as a, as a warrior. So you're just thinking, okay, he's just a normal warrior. And then, of course, the whole daughter not want, not, or not being allowed to come along, which also was like, okay, very typical. The daughter has to stay at home where the brother goes to fight. Um, and then her rushing in is like, okay. And I saw a little bit like, you know, Gilad was proud of her coming in. But then she pushed it too far. And so, yeah, it was, again, you know, you have this evil sibling and then you have the nice sibling who does i mean nice in the context of still killing people Mm. um but for a good reason exactly so yeah again it was very typical nothing special from my side i was just like okay yeah this is what they're gonna use okay continue so nothing special so yeah, no, again, I, I thought she was kind of interesting overall. I love the scene of her explaining, like, what happened afterwards. The idea that she didn't, you know, she didn't know she was immortal. So, what's called? So, the idea then that she was, like, just living alone in the woods and then, like, basically lost track of time. Yeah. I don't know, I thought that was a very moving image somehow, just kind of, you know, seeing that, you know, a city has, you know, just crumbled due to, you know time passing and yeah but has it but did it though that that's 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 the problem i mean i did not realize that she was talking about that because i couldn't see that the city was crumbled because it was so far away hmm. you know what i mean because if I'm, I'm looking at the picture now again and that sunrise is coming up all i can see is buildings and i don't know if that's an artistic choice or not but it looks just like a city to me Oh, okay, I'm looking at it. It's it has kind of um... it. It looks just like a, a city from far away that someone took artistic liber- liberty with, and didn't like color it in or anything like that. So okay, if you when she says, so so when she says how long does it take a city to crumble, I thought like she was looking at a city that was not crumbled. Mm, well, I think the and idea so it, is um, which I think they did kind of poorly in that sense. But I think you're supposed to compare it to the. Not the page before, but the page before that. Because then there's a similar panel in terms of, like, layout. So the last panel there. But even then, yeah, there's not too much of yeah, a but, difference. But th- that, that's a lot to, to assume from a from a reader to, to pick up on the differences between two panels over a page apart. 
No, I agree. And looking at it now too, it's as you said, you know, it's I mean it's I think it's fine to be less detailed the further away you are, of course. But yeah, exactly. But yes. to depict yeah. this kind of important sort of point, it's not very clear. Again, because the artist is great. There's nothing wrong with the art in of itself, but it's just this choice of how to present it. Right. And I mean for her I mean, right now again I'm just thinking like she's looking at it and then um but the thing is like I, the reason I don't really mention it that much because I don't, I don't pick up on it, mm. you know, not, not in the same way. Like I, I see it and I go like, okay, that's weird. But then I continue on. I don't like, I don't sit and try to figure out what went wrong or what I didn't understand because you know, again, and this is, um, just me as a, someone who's reading comics, I don't care that much. And I, like you, I don't get frustrated at some <laughs> sort of problem within a comic. Cause for me, it's still just a comic. Oh, again, I'm usually like that too. I've told you, you know, it's... Uh... Yeah, yeah. But I mean, even the, the smallest thing, I'm not going to be looking at this going like, I mean, the only reason I'm discussing it now is because this is kind of the idea of the podcast to discuss our ideas. And this kind of made me realize what the problem was when I was reading it. But yeah, I was just looking at it going like, okay, she's looking at a city that's been standing there for a while. And she's talking about how long does it take to crumble? And all this stuff. And then suddenly we're in this time where these two kids are screaming at her for eating a, a animal. So yeah, it just, it just completely distracted me. I was just constantly then onto the next thing and, and yeah, that's it. Yeah, no, I can agree with that. Um, so I don't know. Overall, also, because also as we've noticed a bit with uh, our discussions with the previous uh, series and stuff. So I do notice I have a penchant for, I'm not sure if I'd call them asshole characters. But I find it interesting when a character isn't, yes, purely nice, nice, or even an anti-hero in that sense. You know, it's a reason I like Karada and uh, what's called Peter Stanchik. You know, in the sense of, okay, yeah, none of them are exactly good people. And same thing here with uh, Zaron. Was that Zaron? What's her name, Zaron? Yeah, or Xenon or something like that. Something weird. Let me just double shoot to make sure. Yeah, Zaron. It's always my problem. Yeah, it's always my problem with these kind of names is that they're so hard to then, you know, remember. I mean, obviously, if everyone's called Tom or, <laughs> or Ben or something like that, then yes, they're more boring, but it's easier to remember them than. You know anything else well they should do, do the stan lee way you know the all all alliteration method yeah so but um i don't know but i guess kind of like the overall idea there and also her not being totally into wrong all the time but i guess that's also where it became kind of weird almost kind of weird parenting i guess kind of like we were discussing in quantum and woody because Gilad's kind kind of gives mixed signals. I feel in the, like first issue and stuff. I mean, it's kind of like no, you can't do this. You know, you got to stay here. But then he's proud of her when she does intervene. Yeah. But then he goes too far, and I, I don't. It's just like I'm getting mixed signals, Dad. <laughs> I don't know. It's like I said. It's to me it was frustrating on so many levels. Not just in terms of like you know potential plot holes or you know inconsistencies. Yeah. But yes, overall, and even certain ways, and another word I think that I, especially like the last two issues, uh, rushed. I mean, they have this whole like setup thing or like preparing for a war kind of thing. You know, yeah. even making fun of like uh, American gun culture and stuff. It's always fun. You can just get these things. Yep. Welcome to America. So, which again, I don't know what the state they're in at the moment, but. But the whole thing there, I just kind of feel, okay, they're setting things up. It's you know, kind of cool. And then it's all over in one issue, you know, the whole like, and it's just a like gunfight with an explosion. Right. I don't know. It's, it's times like this. Honestly, do you know how this felt for me? It would have wow. been better as like a manga, the way they better at like, you know, dragging things out. No, but in the sense of, you know, okay, here we go. And then we'd have, like, a whole thing about him killing all these things. Like, and then it's just, just like in a manga, you know, it's all these boss battles, basically. Yeah, of course. But that reminds me of something, too. And this is also something that I don't think has been brought up in any other comic in, in Valiant. The houses. 
they're mentioning about these houses that you know you now waged war on the houses you know, the yeah. house of the wild and the house of the wheel with those robot birds like yeah that's what i was saying before is that i think that this should have replaced the religions that we know of in our real world oh those were the ones you were referring to okay i thought you yeah well what religions would i be referring to otherwise no, no, but I didn't consider them as religions in that sense. I just saw them as kind of sects, which made me confused since we already have the sects in Archer and Armstrong. And also a sect is usually a religious thing, so... Yeah, but still, it's... Uh, I don't know, it's, I guess it's weird. But yeah, that's what I was talking about with all these houses. Okay. That's what I mean also. You know, these things, from what I can tell, are not ever mentioned again or brought out. Again, tweet at Humphrey if you <laughs> think that he's a total idiot and completely wrong. Well, well, no, I mean, tweet me if I'm wrong, you know, not just if I'm, like, being annoying, but if I'm factually no, no, no. wrong. <laughs> That's what I meant. No, okay. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, you broke up a little bit, so maybe I missed that part. But that's the thing, I just, I don't know, it was just so weird reading it. So, well, again, I mean, maybe we, we don't know what the background is behind these comics. I mean, maybe they were planning on doing something else, and then... They just realize that, you know what, they're not that popular and you have to change it. And, I mean, if people were thinking like, well, because, I mean, Gilad is, is kind of an asshole in this uh, in this story, in some sense. I mean, he's going around, like, like killing gods just because, why? Like, we don't have a real reason why. It's just like, he's just, me. I don't want to. Mm. I mean, they're all giving him good reasons. I mean, that's the thing. Everyone's giving him a good reason to do the job like i mean yeah you you have people saying like yeah you can kill these people um and it's for the greater good and but then at the same time he also is talking about how much he loves killing people mm. and then he turns around and talks about how much he hates killing people exactly or, no not, not not how much he hates killing people how much he hates death so he's like he's like standing there looking at this whole tribe that's been desecrated and he's sitting there going like, oh my god, this is horrible. Right after he just cut someone's head off. You know what I mean? It's just like one of those things where it's just like, you, you can't be a hypocrite like that. Exactly. And I mean, honestly, right now, it's just really annoying because he's kind of like going back and forth. Maybe the, the, the editors or the writers or whoever at the company at Valiant was just like, you know what? We have to make Valiant, uh, we have to make Gilad a better character. So we have to bring him back to his, you know, his, his mission. And, and then you can kind of talk about like, okay, if he, he's, he's bound by the world or by the, by, by the earth to do this mission, and he's a soldier, so he's following orders, even though he might not always like it. So yeah, then we can make him become this brooding, dark guy who all the ladies love and all the guys want to be, you know, that kind of thing where it's just like, you know, because he's so troubled, and then he's like, oh, but it's my mission, and oh, it's my duty to the gods of the earth, and stuff like that, and and then then you can make him into a character that people will enjoy more, so I'm pretty sure they just thought, okay, you know what, let's scrap it. Let's scrap all the ideas that we had with him being the god killer, let's just make him the protector of the geomancer. Or maybe it was completely different, maybe they were right, putting together the the plot lines for the first for the Valiant crossover, and they realized that they needed someone to be a guardian of the of the Geomancer in order to fight the eternal enemy, or the immortal enemy. So, and then they thought, well, it has to be the Eternal Warrior, and oh, but he's not part of the gods anymore, and oh, he killed the Earth God actually. So why is there a Geomancer now? And oh, God, and it goes back and forth like that. And they say, you know what? Let's screw it. Cut all the ties and just let's hope that no one notices. Let's hope that no one makes a podcast that's mildly not even halfway successful and points this out. Yeah, no, maybe. Because I can't remember a lot of discussion either. Um, again, you know, I wasn't reading this as it was, you know, being published, so maybe there was. But I think I'm generally going to look some up, stuff up about it now just to see if people were discussing it and maybe explaining things. Like maybe yeah, we, we can, are wrong. We can, do, we can do a follow-up before the next episode. So yeah. Because like I said, you know, I was very... This was the first time reading them where I was genuinely like, ah, this, I'm just not getting it. And it's a pity too, because um, Greg Pak was the writer, and he did, he's done a lot of good books, most noticeably Planet Hulk. 
So, which I think is probably one of my favorite Marvel comics ever. I don't know if that makes you know me what's called bad taste or whatnot, but you know he's a good writer, so it's definitely not like they gave this to some up and coming amateur or something. So it's one of those things where you're wondering what is going on. As you said, you know, is it like something with the editors or some short sightedness or in terms of... Well, again, I mean, just the, the quality of the writer doesn't determine how much he can write in the continuity. I mean, if he's being told that they want to do this kind of stuff, or maybe this was his idea. Maybe he was thinking, yeah, this is, this is a good idea that we want to pull through with the whole God killing thing. And then the editors realized or... The information came in that no one cared or no one wanted to read it, so they scrapped it. I mean, that happens to the best writers or the best creators. You know, they'll make wildly successful stuff first, and then at some point, people will just not like the stuff that they do. And it's not a fault of the writer in that sense, just the people don't enjoy it. And it doesn't mean that it's not good. I mean, obviously, it has to be good if it was produced, but just because people don't like it, you know, that can change it. Yeah, no, it's, well, I don't know, it's uh, yeah, it's just weird. Like I said, it's usually when we start these podcasts up, I'm like in all in excitement. You know, because yeah. it was like, uh, oh, yeah, it's really cool. And basically the question is mostly always, you know, okay, what did Chris think? Mm. You know, it's very rarely that I'm the one who is very like, it's sort of like, ah, oh, yeah, I didn't like this. Or, you know, I didn't like these characters. Yeah, well, I think we're both in this boat. I mean, this, I think maybe why this, this, particular podcast might be a little bit slower just because we both didn't really like this uh, strip. I mean, we didn't like this comic. I mean, again, I really like the character still. I mean, I like what he, the potential of this character, but yeah, this, this volume, I didn't like it that much just because again, it was just too all over the place and um, didn't explain everything in the, in the sense that I, I felt it needed to um, the, the, like the third act was just way too quick, if you want to see it as, as like that. And I don't know, I just couldn't enjoy it. I mean, the thing is, I actually enjoyed the um, volume two much more. Yeah, so no. I kind of wish we were talking about volume two instead of volume one. Well, again, you know, I, if you want, I could read it now and we could take care of, you know, it already and save it. <laughs> no, we want to do it chronologically, so we have to wait until All right. the correct... Time. You might need to reread it again then later anyways. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't mind because it was very enjoyable. <laughs> I remember it being that too. You know, it's a lot more... That's, I guess we're getting like a mini version of it based on just my memory of it now. But, yeah. you know, unlike this one, which has these continuity issues in terms of, you know, being set in the present day. This one's, you know, all the way in the future. It has enough leeway in terms of what's happened. Yeah, everyone's dead anyway that we know. Exactly. Except for maybe... Uh, What's it called? Maybe yeah, Armstrong? So yeah, exactly. Those kinds of things. As well as then, um, what's it called? Yes. And I mean, it's kind of a little Mad Maxi kind of world, you know, uh, you know, all yeah. these kind of cool people, civilizations, you know, references yeah, to old things. That don't, it's neat. Yeah, it is. So and as you said, you know, as you start off uh, with the previous version of our podcast, uh, ah, man, I think I actually deleted it. Could have been kind of nice to have. <laughs> But as you mentioned then with, um, yeah, it was, you know, you know, Eternal War, you're always thinking history, you know, like the past. So to have it start off in the future, that was, you know, kind of a weird, but it worked. Yeah. And then you were just like, wait, what? Yeah. So like, there's a big text, there's a text, big text that says present day Africa. Yeah. Which and is I was an, like, no, it didn't. Which is yeah. another one of those things that, again, it's a nitpick, but, um, you know, it's called something that a lot of people bring up whenever they have like use Africa and it's like, oh, that explains their location perfectly. It's one of the largest yeah. land masses of Earth and like, Africa where? Right. Well, because most people don't know the single countries within Africa. Yeah. I mean, you know a couple of them, but you know, this did not look like Egypt. It didn't look like South Africa. So those are the only two that most people know. So, or at least know and know where they are. Mm, and that's just so, because they're at yeah. extremities. <laughs> exactly. South Africa. That's the that's one up north, right? Uh, so, um, well, you know, some stuff are confusing like that. Like the, what's called, um, like the ancient Greenland Egypt. Greenland Iceland. Well, yeah, in ancient Egypt. Do you remember reading about that? Or did you ever read that? 
like in school? I don't know. Because they had reverse in terms of what they saw as the north and south. Mm. So because again, it's just pure arbitrariness that we look at maps the way we do. You know, in terms of yep. uh, Europe's at the top, and we might as well, because of, you know, gravity and all that, just turn it upside down. Right. And that's how the Egyptians kind of saw it. So their their north part of Egypt was the south, and then the opposite. Yeah, it's just like with uh, Finland as well, or Finnish. The uh, north and south is also. I always believe it's, it's it feels really weird because um, the word for south can also mean the word for forward. Mm. Like if you change the tenses a little bit, and the word for north could also mean ground or like to go to the like ground. So I've always I've always been a little bit confused when I when I found out about that. So I always had to always think the, it's the, the exact opposite way than I that I want it to be. But yeah, so weird I, stuff. Well, again, as you listeners can hear, you know, we're, we've been in care for this comic so much that we were talking about ancient <laughs> we're Egypt. T- we're, try- we're trying to pad out the episode so we can get to the hour-long mark, but we don't have to. No, I think we might as well leave it at that. In that <laughs> sense. I mean, yeah, I, think uh, so too. I mean, short and short, none of us liked it really. It's definitely not, you know, off, what's called offensive or anything like that, which, you know, it's... Off, <laughs> no, but you know what I mean. It's not like it's, uh, you know, unless you unless you want to look at it that way with the Native American scene. Uh, you mm, know, yeah. but... Um, no, but you know what I mean. It's not like it's a call for, you know, hatred or anything like that. It's just not a well thought out, especially within the... At least within the meta. Like I said, right. if I just read this by my... You know, as the only thing of Valiant... There's nothing contradicting anything, you know, because it works within itself. Yeah. But with everything else, like my what's called, yeah, because my nerdiness just gets like actually came out to like complain about these things, which I usually make fun of people <laughs> complaining about. <laughs> so, but now, now I know their pain. <laughs> yeah. So now, now I get to all those uh, what's called four chan friends complaining about all these Marvel things, and because uh, you know they actually have read all these other comics, so they you know get pissed off when they suddenly change people's characterization and stuff. But whatever. Any last words for our, like any last words? Uh, nope. I I was I would have probably said that I hope that Volume Two is better. Uh, than volume one, but I know that it is, so... So looking I forward to it again. <laughs> I'm just looking forward to reading volume two again, or discussing it at least with you. Um, again, it, does, it hasn't changed my mind of the Eternal Warrior. I still think he's my favorite character in this universe. Um, I just think it would have been there would have been a better way to uh, introduce him in his own comic, but uh, that's just my opinion. Mm. All right, then. Well, that was the 20th episode of Hardcast, detailing Eternal Warrior Volume 1. For more content from me and Chris, follow us on Twitter at Humphrey underscore Aaron and at Christian D. Claus. You can subscribe to us on iTunes or listen to us directly on valianthardcast.podbean.com. Catch us later for our next episode, discussing Archer and Armstrong, Volume 4, Sect Civil 